Well, a very warm welcome to St. Conlon's Park here in Newbridge for the 2011 final of the O'Byrne Cup between Kildare and Loud. It's the 14th time Kildare have been in an O'Byrne Cup final and should they win today, will they be creating a little bit of history having won the competition a record nine times. Right, let's go through the teams. Kildare starting 15, Shane Connolly's in goal, the full-back line of Emmett Bolton, Hugh McGrillan and Kieran Fitzpatrick. The half-back line consists of Eamon Callaghan, Mark Scanlon and David White in in midfield, we've Mick Foley of a tie and Porrick O'Neill. The half forward line, Tommy Mulek, Owen O'Flaherty, and Fionn Dowling. And the full forward line, Minutes Carl Ennis, Willie Heffernan, and Marco Sullivan. Two changes for Kildare from the team which beat Westmead. And of course, they're taking on Loud, who dumped them out of the Leinster Senior Championship last June. Six points was the difference back then. And just a little bit of note Loud have five starting players from that starting 15 in Navan last June. Big game coming up. It's the O'Byrne Cup final. Kildare and Loud. Enjoy, and we'll catch you up again later. OK, we're approaching the throw and we're here with Andrew McLaughlin. Andrew, you're not involved today, but it's uh, I know you're on Burn Cup. A lot of counties don't take it seriously, but it's good to see Kildare and Lau taking it seriously. Yeah, well, I think the teams that don't take it seriously may have got knocked out earlier, you know, but uh, and that's an excuse for them. But uh, we set out a goal to do well in all competitions this year, you know, and um, there's a lot of young blood in here and they're playing extremely well, you know, and that's about they're all in training to press Kieran and the selecting teams, you know, so that's why they're playing so well. You know plenty about Loud. The beaches in the Auburn Cup last year, and of course the beaches in in the Leinster. So a score to settle. Well, there's always a score to settle with most teams in your playing in Leinster because you play them so often. But uh, like even if we uh, uh, beat Loud today, it still doesn't make up for the, what they did to us last year. You know, so we a couple of more games before we get on top. Like, but it's a to be always a bit of biting game to this. You know, a big crowd. Loud supporters travel fierce well. You know, and they're great supporters for their team. You know, and obviously we have great supporters. So it'll be a great crowd uh, interaction today as well. Like, you know, only two changes from the West Mead team, but no major surprises. No, like the like the last one very well against West Mead. It was a difficult sort of game. Like the weather conditions for didn't make for a great game. You know, the, un, it was very wet underfoot. You know, and uh, it wasn't the last ten minutes that we started pulling away. You know, and got a few scores. And we got a bit of momentum playing. You know, so it was, uh, it'd be interesting to see now. We might be a few lads brought on today because trends going very well and there's so many lads playing so well in each position. Like you know. Okay, it's going to be tight. Give us a quick prediction. Uh, I reckon it might be low scoring for the first half because I say teams will be feeling each other out, you know, both sides, but uh, I think we pull away in the end, maybe two or three points. Well, it's a Burn Cup final of 2011, just about to get underway. The Dublin referee, Gary McCormick, just about to throw it in. Midfield for Kildare, Huey Lynch and Mike Mick Foley, and up they go, but it's the loud captain, Paddy Keenan, which gains momentum or gains possession early in the game, and it's a quick free for Mark Brennan in the loud colours. Brennan lines down the ball into the corner for Derek Maguire. Maguire now being pushed into the corner by the number four for Kildare, Kilcox, Kieran Fitzpatrick, and loud have an early chance where... The number 10, Derek Krell, nearly got in, but Kildare have cleared up, and now they're going to try and get out of their own half here. That's David. Paddy Keenan. Paddy Keenan now makes inroads towards the Kildare half, looking for some of his teammates. He hasn't managed to find it, offload it, and well, Kildare look as though they have regained possession through their captain, Eamon Callahan. and Callahan now trying to get rid of the challenge of Brian Donnelly, and, well, the referee, Gary McCormick, has awarded Kildare a free. Quick free from Callahan, who finds Porrick O'Neill in his new midfield road, back to the Kildare half back David White and he's given it to yes quick first scorer of the day has gone to Kildare's Emmett Bolton good effort by Bolton but well it looks as though they have won a quick free Mick Foley was back there he appears to have been penalised for fouling Shane Lennon the loud full forward so a perfect opportunity for loud now to draw level against Kildare we've had nearly seven minutes gone in this O'Byrne Cup final Kildare leading by a point to nil but it's about to be 1-1 and yes Shane Lennon has kicked over with the minimum of fuss and that's loud's first point of the afternoon Kildare trying to regain possession Porrick O'Neill another St Lawrence's man playing in midfield today has managed to win possession Eamon Callan, the captain now manages to find Hugh Lynch Hugh Lynch now trying to look for some somewhere to play and he's managed to find Eamon Callahan, who was nearby Eamon Callan, good ball up by Callahan, and it's the number 7 out David White the Moorfield man who's managed to quickly find Carl Ennis the minute man Carl Ennis looking for his first point of the afternoon and well it's not going to come here because he over travelled it was wide anyway but Loud now have a free out nearly 10 minutes gone in this O'Byrne Cup final all to play for very early in the game a oh, quick 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 free from Loud and it's their half forward Mark Brennan who has position Emmett Bolton trying to wrestle the Loud half forward 
and Bolton, well, he's not giving Mark Brennan any room, and, well, Kildare have been penalised now. The ball, Shane, Gary McCormick, the Dublin referee, bringing up the ball, and Loud now, well, they've quickly taken the free, and it's their half for Derek Maguire, who's gone on the charge. He's managed to beat a, a couple of challenges, including Hugh McGrillan, and it's the number 13, Derek Maguire. What a goal for Loud. He ran past at least five Kildare challenges. The Kildare defence didn't know where to look, and Derek Maguire, with a soccer-style solo run, has managed to kick the first goal in this game. Well, Kildare, after appearing to settle the better, are now finding themselves a goal behind. And, well, Kieran McGinney won't be happy with what he's seen in this opening ten minutes. And just as we say that, just after that loud goal, louder on the attack again, Ronan Carroll, the midfielder, can Loud get a second goal to follow up that quick goal? It's the number 13, though. Derek Maguire, the goal scorer. He opts for a point on this occasion. And Loud, in the space of a couple of minutes, have put four points between themselves. And Gildare. Gildare, Mick Foley on that occasion, making the interception. Gildare now on the attack. It's important Gildare get a score to just stop the Loud onrush at the moment. And it's... Kildare now who are on the attack. Porrick O'Neill has managed to find Alan Smith and the Sarsfields man with a, a good effort and he's managed to kick his first point in Kildare's second of the afternoon. But well, Kildare, as soon as they seem to do the hard work, they give possession straight back and Lau do have possession now through their corner forward, Reid, who of course was, had his effort blocked there by Emmett Bolton. Number two now for Lau, that's Eamon McCauley with a good ball in and it's... Shane Lennon, who's already got on the score sheet, who has been bowled over there by the Kildare corner back. That's Kieran Fitzpatrick. And, well, an ideal opportunity now for Loud to extend their lead. And it's likely to be the man who was filled, Shane Lennon. He's likely to be the man who's going to step up and take this free. Just less than 20 metres out, Lennon. And for the second time today, he splits the post with a fairly straightforward free. And, and Kildare could have been in trouble again. But Kildare now, they have managed to get out of a spot of bother there. And they're on the attack now. It's the number 10, Tommy Mulek, the league slip man. Offloads it to Emmett Bolton. He got Kildare's first of the afternoon. But, well, that wasn't like the Eadstown man. And he's way off target to kick Kildare's second wide of this first half. Free now from Kildare, just the 28 minutes. It looks as though it's... Carl Ennis with the effort. It's Owen O'Flaherty, actually, the claim man who has managed to kick the point, and that's, well, his first of the afternoon. A scoring opportunity now for Kildare, something that they would need, and if they manage to kick this over, well, it looks like David White's the man who's going to go for the effort. White, he won't be short, that's for sure, and he's managed to find a range, and that's his first point of the afternoon. Kildare's fourth, Mark Scanlon, the round towers man. Scanlon, a ball out left to own oh flaherty he's managed to get a point so far to claim on the flaherty now Hooley offload the ball to it's tommy mulek the leak slip man still looking for his first point of the afternoon what will mulek do will he look for a possession no he's gone for the target this time it was an off effort by mulek and Kildare in the end nearly got a goal opportunity but they have managed to get the point it came from Tommy Mulek, he sliced his effort the ball fell to Alan Smith, Smith's effort was blocked back to the Kildare so corner back, that was Hugh McGrill Loud have quickly taken their free and they're now on the attack, Derek Krell inside the Kildare half, who's he going to find Shane Lennon is the man, he's trying to find Lennon has managed to break free, he's going with a left footed effort, Shane Lennon, and that looks as though it's good, yes it is, good effort by Shane Lennon, his third point of the afternoon and Loud are back Two points in front. Lennon steps up. No problems for Lennon. Straight between the Kildare post and the Newbridge end. And in the space of a couple of minutes, Kildare had managed to get themselves back to a point. But two Lennon points have seen Loud kick on again. They lead by three. One five to five points. Loud are quickly on the break again. Their goal scorer. That, of course, Derek Maguire. He's got one two so far in this game. Maguire had a one one in this game. But he's been hauled to the ground. And it looks as though it's going to be another opportunity for Lau to see can they extend the lead. Shane Lennon again, right footed, and it looks good. And that's an excellent effort by Shane Lennon. He certainly brought his kicking boots today. That's five he's kicked, four from freeze. And well, Kildare looked as though they had a chance to get level by the time half time came. They're now four behind, just three minutes until the break. And it's now Porrick O'Neill. Porrick O'Neill offloads the ball to David White. White. Managed to find claim to Ono Flaherty. Oh, Flaherty up the line. Carl Ennis trying to win possession. He's just managed to win possession. Carl Ennis, he's had a couple of chances to get off the mark, but he has managed to find 
the target today. And well, Kildare are looking to see can they finish the first half and some were some kind of a boost. And Mel, maybe it's a goal opportunity here for Kildare. Porrick O'Neill, and it looks as though it is a goal. And Kildare have managed to find the net. Porrick O'Neill was heavily involved. And it looks as though he is the man who's got the goal. So Kildare have managed to find a goal. They needed it very much so. And Kildare, well, back in this O'Byrne Cup final. It's Kildare 1-5, but they still trail by 5. It's now 2-7, Kildare 1-5. Well, it's half-time, second half about to start. Andrew, they're, they're trailing by five. Loud have shown that they're they're not here just to make up the numbers. Oh, certainly now they're after cutting through us a couple of times there now, and uh, like a, a couple of occasions, a, a block by Park and Elan by Emmett Ball. It could have been worse, you know. But uh, we started to take some of our opportunities, you know, and lessen the gap from eight to five, you know. So with Park and goal there just before half time, so it made a slight difference. Crucial goal. It is. It is because. It changes the whole tactics at half time, whether it's eight points or five points, you know, because if it's eight points, you're throwing the kitchen sink, you know, you're going to leave gaps behind and you, you run the risk of that eight point gap going to 10 and 12, you know, like if, because you're, you're leaving your defence open. But five points, you know, you can pick off scores and you can get back in the game very quickly, you know. You've seen Fionn Downing come on, are you expecting, well, obviously there will be more change, are you expecting any change at half time? Um, it's hard to know. Um, like normally, here and then will make changes during the game. You know, it's, they, they may not make any decisions at half time because they might talk to the lads and give them some direction. You know, on what way they want to change their style of play. But uh, I soon find out, obviously. You know, but uh, Fionn's in. You know, some of the game is suiting different. You know, he's in pace. He's getting left. He's getting right, and he can kick off both, off both feet. You know, it'll suit him. I'm sure Karen wanted the test. He certainly got it now. Yeah, like, you know, well, listen, it's about, like, Westmead was a, a different sort of game, it was a dogged game, and it was a kind of a, it took a different sort of, um, different finish to the game, you know, this game is going to be, I thought it wouldn't be this much of a gap at half time, I thought it would be a, a little more tender hooks, you know, but uh, even for a big game in the second half, you now, a big finish. Still confident? Still confident, you know, uh, we have the players, we have the scoring forwards, you know, I just think we have to just change our style, it's slightly different, you know, they're, they're, they have our number 15 coming back as their extra man in the defence, and it's uh, he's blocking a lot of our runs inside, and uh, we something similar ourselves slightly, you know, not as, as negative, but uh, we might have to change one or two things at half time. You know. Hope for the best. I know, I think we'll I still think we'll come out on top, you know, by one or two points, you know, but uh, it'll be very close. Let's hope so. Yeah. So. Kildare trailing by five, a minute played in the second half of the Auburn Cup final. The sideline ball in from Loud. Emma Bolton, though, well, it looked as though he's going to regain possession there, but he hasn't. Loud now on the break, trying to get the first kick off, first point of the second half. It's the number 11, Mark Brennan. And now it's one of the midfielders, captain, and that's Paddy Keenan, and he has kicked the first point of this second half. Kicking in now to the town end, David White, and well, he'll be bidding to kick Kildare's first point of this second half. Oh, it doesn't look as good this time. He's pushed it right, but it's still going to swell. It should have stayed in. It looked as though it was Eamon Callahan who tried to fist the ball across goal, but completely missing. And that's the second wide of the second half for Kildare. He is indeed going to throw the ball in. Ronan Carroll, the loud midfielder, and Hugh Lynch vie for possession. And it looks as though it's Loud who've come out on top. And indeed, they have managed to win a free Loud, so another good opportunity for the Wee County men to extend their lead. This time it was Adrian Reid, the corner forward, who was brought to his knees, and it looks as though it's another opportunity for Shane Lennon to add to his tally. Okay, so some 26, 27 metres out from goal, Shane Lennon, who of course has already kicked the majority of Loud's scores, he stands up and this time he has done exactly what he's done pretty much all afternoon, good kick straight over the bar and well, every loud chance Loud have had, they've pretty much taken and they're on the attack again through their captain Paddy Keane and he offloads the ball to the substitute Andy McDonald out on the attack again and it could be another opportunity for Loud and indeed it is and it's Mark Brennan with his first point of the afternoon Loud pretty much they can't miss when they're up on the attack so another opportunity for Gildare and well it is Carl Ennis again let's hope he has the distance on this occasion he is a little bit closer into goal but this is an opportunity that he should be taking advantage for he's about 25 metres out from goal maybe a little bit more Carl Ennis with the left boot 
and over the bar. Kildare's first point of the second half. They need to start upping the tempo, but they have kicked. They managed to break the duck in the second half. Kildare do trail, though. Ronan Sweeney territory. Sweeney didn't win, but it's Mark Scanlon who has managed to pick up possession for Kildare. And, well, a foul by Paddy Keenan, the loud captain on Mark Scanlon. So Kildare will be give awarded a free own. O'Flaherty is the man who has opted to take the free Scanlon. here. Own O'Flaherty, the clean man. Not the greatest of frees from Owen O'Flaherty. He should be doing better than that. And he's given possession straight away. Yeah, yeah. Kildare now on the attack. They need to take advantage of all this possession. Porrock O'Neill to Ronan Sweeney. Ronan Sweeney to another Murfield man. David White to the Sarsfields man of Alan Smith. Who tries to wrangle through. That's surely a free for Kildare. He would have been through in. Ray Finnegan was the man who's taken him down. And well this should be a straightforward opportunity for Kildare to close the gap. Yep, straightforward stuff from the Carby man. Flardy doubles his tally for the afternoon. That's two points for him. 1-7 for Kildare. They trail by 2-9 to 1-7. 16 minutes remaining on the clock. Seven to Kildare. Kildare, though, have managed to win possession in the centre of the field. Hugh McGrillan, who's already got a point. He offloads the ball to Eamon Callan. He's also got a point. Callan, the Kildare captain. It's a slice ball, but it's fallen to Carl Ennis. Ronan Sweeney now. Goal opportunity, but he's been taken down. That's surely a free for Kildare. He'd kick his first point with his previous free and he's just added that and there are two important points for Kildare in the space of a couple of minutes they trail by six they now trail by four two nine to one eight 14 and a half minutes to go but his side still lead by four on the near side now we have Ray Finnegan Finnegan now making ground He's been followed all the time by Ono Flaherty, but Finnegan manages to, to click the ball in. This is good stuff from Loud, and again it's Derek Maguire, and it's the other full forward, that's Shane Lennon, who's trying to get in, but somehow Kildare managed to clear their lines. Mick Foley was involved in that clear-up play from Kildare. It was a per great opportunity, goal-scoring opportunity for Loud, but Kildare have got off the hook, and now it's Ronan Sweeney who, well has managed to find Carl Ennis. Carl Ennis hasn't managed for play, but that's a dirt definite free for Kildare. There. And Andy McDonnell has now started another, another loud move. If loud can manage to go five clear, surely that would be curtains for Kildare. It's a high ball in, and it's a goal opportunity for Loud. Oh, and that's a last gasp attempt at a block by one of the Kildare backs. And somehow, with an open goal gaping, Loud have somehow not managed to score a third goal. If that had gone in, it would have been curtains for Kildare, but Kildare holding on for their life. And Ronan Sweeney, again, he's at the heart of everything Kildare have had to offer in the second half. He's found Hugh Lynch. Hugh Lynch, a, need, a much better ball needed on this occasion. But again, Hugh Lynch, he's been let down by his passing on a number of occasions today. And, well, a poor ball in means that Paddy Keenan has won a free for Loud. Eight and a half minutes remaining. Kildare still trail by four. It's Emmett Bolton offloads the ball to Alan Smith, Smith, no excuse if he doesn't kick this over, and he has managed to find a target, and for all Louds huffing and puffing in the last few minutes, it's Kildare who've kicked the next score, six minutes on the clock, they now only trail by three, it's Loud 2-9, Kildare 1-9. Time will be played in the Suburban Cup final, Loud have possession, Derek Krill with a free high ball into the well. The ball's fallen to Derek Maguire. If Loud had a score here, it's surely curtains for Kildare. But again, Kildare have somehow managed to regain possession and they've been awarded a free. So Kildare, they three minutes and six seconds. The scoreboard reads remaining in this Burn Cup final. They still trail by three points. Owen O'Flaherty, the Carberry man, who's already got a couple of points. Emmett Bolton, who kicked the very first point in this Burn Cup final. He's been taken down, so quick free. And it is Bolton who's going to quickly take it. He gives it, lays the ball off to Mark Scanlon, the round towers man. He manages to find Ronan Sweeney. Sweeney, well, Sweeney had one possession, but he's been fouled, and it looks as though Kildare have been awarded a free. We're now into the last 30 seconds of the 70. Two minutes of additional time are to be played. Is that Kildare's last chance to see can they force this game to extra time or possibly win it in the 70? At the moment, they trail by three. They need a goal. There's no doubting about that, but it's Loud who have possession. Eamon Callahan manages to halt. Derek Krill, free. Kildare need to regain possession and they need a goal if they've any chance of pushing this to a extra time decider. They have regained possession now. Emmett Bolton offloads the ball. David White now. A long ball surely needed here for Kildare because, well, if they continue to short pass, they'll surely 
lose possession, but it's Hugh McGrillan who manages to find Eamon Callan. This is good stuff from Kildare. Who's he going to find? He finds Porrick O'Neill. Porrick O'Neill into a great opportunity for Kildare. Will it be out the penalty? Surely it is a penalty for Kildare. Gary McCormick has going up now. It was Emmett Bolton. It was true. And Kildare, would you believe, have an injury time penalty? Kind of holds its breath. Sweeney scores into the bottom right and Kildare are level would you believe what a finish to this game O'Connor went left Rowley kept his cool bottom right corner and surely extra time is on the cards here at St. Connell's Park quick free Fionn Dowling now with possession and it's Eamon Callaghan the captain can he do it Eamon Callaghan surely Kildare has scored can you believe it? It looked as though Eamon Callaghan had got it. It came off the upright or came into the hands of Keith Cribben to substitute. He couldn't miss. This is unbelievable stuff from St. Conlis Park. In the space of two minutes in injury time, Kildare has scored two goals. And from out of the hunt, from dead and buried, they look as though they're going to win their first Auburn Cup. And Gary McCormick blows the full-time whistle. And from dominating this game, for the best part of 70 minutes it's hard to believe Loud haven't even managed to get a draw Kildare were second best for much of this game but well the never say die attitude from Kieran McGinney's men and two injury time goals the first from Ronan Sweeney as cool as you like the Moorfield man going bottom right with the penalty and then Keith Cribben with probably his only second touch of the game since he came on well he couldn't miss when Eamon Callahan's effort came back off the upright fell into his hands and Keith Cribben the clean youngster firing in to an empty net unbelievable stuff here at St. Connell's Park in Newbridge for the first time since 2003 Kildare have won the Auburn Cup Eamon Callahan will be the man lifting the trophy and Kildare have made history because they now have won a record nine Auburn Cups unbelievable finish at St. Connell's Park